So this is just going to be an impromptu, hopefully not overly long talk, because I know y'all are busy. Uh, a little talk about the divine. So just a real quick background on me. I was raised fundamentalist Christian, and the big deal that was made was about the end times. And... It was hard. Now, luckily, I sort of had some grounding from before. Uh, my mom decided to go down that route. And, you know, I had just more of regular, I'm going to call it, like moderate Lutheran, the ELCA. I know it stands for Evangelical Lutheran Church, but it's it's really more of the moderate of the of the synods within the Lutheran denomination. So... I think the problem with being that shift towards fundamentalism is that we went from a God who was very loving or, um, and he, he still was in the new conception, but the emphasis was less on loving and caring and concern and stuff like that. And more just, Converting souls, converting souls, getting people to blah, 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 blah. And that was pretty hard um, because, you know, if you if you read the Christian Bible, whichever version, and you get to the Gospels, I mean, Christ, you know, this person who is worshipped as God and is part of all of, the, you know, our, our thoughts about, about what Christianity ought to be. I mean, you know, again, is a Christian magical system. And within it, by the way, the angels always emphasize love, 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 right? So love is a very deep thing. And if you think it isn't, then you haven't really thought that much about it. And I know that's an arrogant thing to say, but I think any of us, most of you are probably going to know, yeah, it kind of is. Because we and we're commanded to love we're that's the second greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself and the greatest one is to love god with all your heart all your mind all your soul right so there's a real appreciation for for god and what he has done in the sense that you are alive to even recognize him okay and by the way from that one from recognizing you know what he has created up until this point that should follow that you are something that he has made and he's made in his image right there's all of these different phrases from the bible which is not to say that we're perfect by any means but we have rationality we have the capacity to love the capacity to plan and think ahead and all of that so these are things that Animals have to some degree, but not like us. And we're capable of transmitting vast amounts of information and solving huge problems and stuff like that. So really, of all of all the animals, you know, humans, we got it kind of good <laughs> on this planet. Um, okay, you know, and that's writ large, not necessarily completely. But, and that's why, you know, love your neighbor as yourself, that's such a big deal. And why it doesn't mean that if you feel bad about yourself, then you get to hate everybody else. It's not that, because the first commandment is love God, therefore you love yourself, and therefore, you know, all of that. You really appreciate that. And you can go even a little bit further, or you can tailor that, let's put it that way, that, sec that second greatest commandment to love each other based on who the other person is, right? Let's say you love, you know, let's say you, you like tomatoes, you know, I like tomatoes. They're okay. They're pretty good, especially, you know, cook them up, right? My sister does not love tomatoes. Uh, so, okay, you know, she doesn't love tomatoes. I love tomatoes. She doesn't. So if I love myself why and I serve her tomatoes, what's the big deal, right? Oh, you see the problem there, right? I'm not loving her as she is. I'm trying to love her as if she is myself, as opposed to love her to the same amount that I love myself. You see the thing? So you gotta, and if you take that out to, you know, extrapolate it really fully, ideally somebody who, who would love you 
would know everything about you or be able to to know what you like, what you don't, blah, 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 your preferences, the things, the things you're dealing with, etc., and be able to really give you the things that are just what you need in that moment. Maybe that even you don't you that you can't give yourself one or that you didn't even know you needed to give yourself. That's pretty pr deep and profound love. And so okay, so then there then there's a real question, right? If God is love, right? So let's get into this. <laughs> let's do this. What do we do with the problem of evil, right? In um philosophy this is known as theodicy god and evil or something like that but that's a general question is like how does god allow evil in this world so then we bring up so a little bit of theology real briefly so the idea of an omnipotent omnibenevolent omniscient and omnipresent god how do we how do we deal with this so for me the which one of those doesn't break down because if god is all loving etc cetera, etc cetera. and the thing i think that where it breaks down is that god is very powerful but he, i don't think he is all powerful in the sense that he has literally created a reality and i think the problem in very early on and by the way this has been you know i got an uncle who's a pastor and this is like i immediately i wasn't trying to shut down the conversation but think I did because I was hoping you would still engage but anyway sorry Uncle Paul <laughs> but um I said he's like okay so if you take this God who you know is separate from creation I say that's it that's what I don't believe I think God is not separate from creation I think God is part of creation now do I think that he is only creation no but I think he is bound in the sense that he is real right and there are certain things and I don't claim to know what they are, but you know, we're all limited by the fact that we are real beings and that we don't have power over reality completely, you know? So we have some, we have a measure of power and I think God has a measure of power of reality and he created reality, no matter how he created it, it was going to be, if he wanted us to feel, to be close to him, then he had to strike some kind of balance, right? He couldn't make each of us all powerful, otherwise we'd all just, yeah, not be all part of the same thing. So, okay, so I'm bringing all of this up to say that God created reality knowing that it was not going to be the level of profound perfection that he is. Knowing that it was going to be, there were going to be limitations. And I think the problem is, is that we think of God as, we think of God as like this parent who can do anything. And he can do a lot, right? But, I think that he's does not have and nor does he want to give us absolute power because in so doing I mean there's you could talk about motivations for that all right but we would not be growing we would not be progressing if we just had the immediate ability to snap our fingers we would not care about the rest of the creation, if we could just solve our own problems and then, you know, do whatever. And that's sort of the biggest problem, right? Is that our true nature is our heart. You know, we have to survive and we get taught a lot of things like that, but the true nature is this, this inner part, this part that is not so different from anything else. We are ultimately completely inherently connected by a single heart mind for lack of a better term buddhists talk about getting to like the ultimate reality of mind and nature and it's a very clear mind right and in order to do that you have to get through a lot of armor that you put up to your heart against other people and that's why that that commandment is so it's such an important one because from that 
everything else, you know, flows. I don't think that um, most, I think that that was Christ's big gift to us to remind us that that was the most important thing. Because otherwise you can, you can just fall down a rabbit hole of following all kinds of rules, all things you need to do. And, you know, the, if you're not focusing on that love first and foremost, then, you know, you just believe the end of the world is coming and I need to do this and that. And, you know, and this is the way a good person is. And, you know, you're not having the freedom. You can't breathe, you know. The heart's right, set right between two sets of lungs, right? You know, if you can't breathe, how's your heart doing? So, <laughs> so I bring all of this up to say that that it's really worth it, okay? It's really worth it to explore explore your heart to allow that life isn't perfect. Now, there are wonderful steps that you can do to take agency in your life. And I think that is wonderful. I think that is, you know, in the sense that God creates us in his image, that he has given us some power to do things. That's wonderful. You know, now we still have to get along with other people, blah, blah, blah. But there are opportunities, okay? And there are struggles to overcome. I get all of that. But the fact that you're a human being in this world, having this experience, you know, just take a step back and appreciate it, you know, love it, right? It's a wonderful thing to have. You know, you get to make friends and you get to have the, the bitter and the sweet and everything is meaningful. And I think that that level of meaning if you understand that God has that at a, at a cosmic level, you know, if God just said, I'm just going to do anything, blah, 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 if he didn't have that level of limitation around himself and his creation, then it would be the same. It, it could, it, you, you would be at risk of having the same level of not caring about this thing that you just created, right? Because there's no ups, there's no downs. Right. It's all just, it's all perfect all the time, blah, blah, blah. So there's no up and down from that. Right. So now, that's not to say that I don't think that we have an opportunity to change and to change for the better and to have a deeper appreciation. I think that's sort of what it means to progress as a person, as an individual. I think it's part of what it means to be an adult. And I think it's what it means as a society matures, right? I'm an American, if you couldn't tell from my accent. And we're really dealing with those questions, right? What's it mean and to be new to blah, 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 right? But I think any society, any nation, any culture, what have you, I think figuring out how, what meaning to take from this human experience individually or collectively, is something that we get a chance to reckon with. And I think the biggest lesson that you can take is to learn to love and to learn how to be okay with yourself and love yourself and be okay with others and love others and honoring all parts of your, your nature and your experience. It's not easy. It's a practice. That's why you call it a spiritual practice. Anyway, these are just some thoughts. Um, I hope you appreciated this. I'm also not, the irony is also not lost on me that John Dean and Edward Kelly were worried about the end of the world. Look, what can I say? That fever grips people. It grips a lot of people and a lot of people's lives get lost to that as opposed to realizing that the biggest power that we have is the meaning that we choose to make. And in order to do that, we need to really understand ourselves. So do it. Figure out who you are, what you're about, 
what how are you different from other people and at the same time recognize that it's just a slight difference that made you or your way versus somebody else become being somebody else and so you if you can respect and honor that then you're doing pretty well so keep going out there keep keep loving be gentle with yourself i don't have all the answers i just have this relatively short 16 minute ish perspective so anyway i love you all uh have a great day week whatever and just if it's really bad know that it can get better and if that it's good appreciate it and also appreciate it if it's bad just appreciate it and make the best meaning you can